Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I'm excited to be creating with Picture Perfect Birthday Stamp Set. This is a really fun stamp set and I say that I know about so many stamp sets, but this one is really, really fun. Most of the image are multi-steps. So here's the way that I do this, and it's usually off camera. I take image number one, if it's a directional stamp, I take it off of the acetate and then place it on the cover. And I make sure that the little carrot or the little arrow is facing at the 12 o'clock on the clock. And then I use my clear block to pick it up from there. And then I kind of flip that clear block over with the top facing the top and I'll know exactly how to stamp all of the images. That's one of the little secret things that I do off camera that nobody usually knows and I thought I would share it with you today. Using multi-generational ink is really fun on these bows. So when you stamp the bow in the full first generation, it is really dark and if you were to stamp out the second stamp which gives the details in between the bow points then it would not really show the definition on a ribbon bow so by using a contrasting color or the second generation then it allows to be able to show highlights and lowlights Along with two-step stamping bows, there are some party blowers. I'm not really sure what the technical word for these little things are, but my kids love to blow on them and have the little piece uncurl and make a whistling blow sound. It's a lot of fun, and it's very clever that we can create them with different patterns. So keeping in the theme of the multi-generational stamping, I've created two party blowers, one that is a light green and the other one is a darker green. First I stamped the solid image, then I added a texture on top of each one and now is the little fringe or made of crepe paper or foil usually in the, in the real type of party blower and I added that with a contrasting color of pink. So adding to this, I'm going to also keep the multi-generational stamping going and use yellow. The yellow is going to echo the colors of my DSP from Birthday Memories. It also has green and blue in that DSP, so that's how I came about choosing the colors for the images that I have stamped. I'm layering everything up here. I have a piece of crushed curry and whisper white, and then I will be doing a little bit of a watercolor wash onto a piece of watercolor paper that is already pre-cut with a stitched shape die. Something really interesting that I do occasionally is I use a leftover Wink of Stella pen to do some watercolor painting or to create a watercolor wash. Even though the fluid has already run out, there is enough residue in the barrel of the Wink of Stella to be able to bring that shine to many more projects. So using it as a paintbrush with tap water filled in the barrel, the remnants of the glitter inside the, from the Wink of Stella come through into my project. And it's just enough sparkle to really be noticeable. Pacific Point, when used with the reinker in this fashion, is a very striking blue color and I really like the results of the watercolor wash on this little stitched circle. The sentiment is going to stamp directly on top of the blue area so I'm going to heat emboss it with white embossing powder. 
Heat embossing is one way that you can add something very striking but yet a personal touch to a handmade card. And the wow factor never goes away for creating the heat embossed sentiments. As you can see, the magic happens as the heat gun melts that heat that embossing powder and I never get tired of watching it. It's just so much it's, it's so interesting. I'm going to layer this panel on Stampin' Dimensionals and then adhere it to the crushed curry which is going to be glued down to the early espresso card base. Because I have only a portion of this circle on top of the raised area of the DSP, then I only need to add dimensionals to the part that touches the card base. For a little something extra and to bring that white color down visually through the rest of the project, I took a scrap of Whisper White cardstock and cut some fringes on it, rolled it up, and I'm adhering that to the back of the bottom party blower that's going to spread that white color through the rest of the project and it'll be a little bit of texture. So when somebody receives this handmade card, I feel certain that they're going to feel the need to touch that little fringed area and that's exactly why I added it to the project. Do you have some little fun texture that you add to your projects? I'd love for you to leave a comment and tell me exactly how and share your information. The inside of the card is kept very simple and I've added one of those other bows because I did create three knowing I would put one on the inside. Thank you so much for joining me for this project. I really enjoy creating different projects and I'd love to hear your ideas if you'd like me to demonstrate anything in particular. Just leave me a comment and I'll respond to you. Be sure not to miss the exclusive content that I share only on my blog and you can get to the blog address by going to the video description. My blog address is jennystampsup.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!